Hello and welcome to Coffee Lovers TV. On the show today, I'm going to show you all about brewing a really fantastic Kalita Wave. Now, the Kalita Wave has become one of my favorite brewers, and on this video, I'm just going to dive into showing you how to brew a really great Kalita Wave, show you the steps that I use um, and everything involved, and then I'll give you some of my thoughts on the wave after that. Okay, so what you're going to need, uh, obviously you're going to need a Kalita Wave. It's a very simple product. It's a flat-bottomed, cone-shaped dripper. Uh, this is the glass version. They come in metal and ceramic as well. Um, I'm a fan of the glass. Of course, there always is the danger of it breaking, but so far so good for me. It has a nice handle on it. Works really well. You can also get the uh, server, the carafe, that is made for the Wave. Uh, I happen to really like that, but you can, of course, set this on a mug, and it works just as fine uh, if you want to get started just getting the dripper. Uh, there are two sizes to the Kalita Wave. This is the 185. Uh, there's also the 155, which brews less. I can brew a mug like this with this size Kalita Wave, so I personally don't really see a need for the smaller one. Again, I can brew enough for one mug with this size, but I can also brew, brew enough for a couple mugs with this size. So um, to me, this is the perfect size. Uh, with this, I can brew 500 milliliters of coffee, uh, which is enough for, I think, one and a half of these. I usually, when I brew, I usually don't fill this all the way to the top. I'll like fill to here, just because I like drinking less amounts of coffee. So uh, one and a half to two mugs, um, I can fill up to there in the carafe with this. So long story short, I think the 185 is the one that I always recommend people. Uh, you'll also, of course, need the appropriate filters. Uh, you have to get the Kalita Wave filters, and that's because uh, they are very specifically shaped. That's the Wave name, uh, these waved filters. Uh, but if you're getting the 185 Kalita Wave, then you need the 185 filters. And uh, while you do have to get the Kalita specific filters, you can find them online easily. I'll link to all this stuff below. So those are the filters. You'll also really want a control pour kettle. I've become a big fan of the Fellow. This is a very high quality product, it's not cheap. Uh, if you do want a less expensive kettle, I still recommend getting a gooseneck kettle just because while exact precision of pouring is not completely necessary with this brew method, I do think that two reasons. A, adding the water more slowly uh, more deliberately does give you a better brew. That's been my personal experience. And also, I mean, it's not that big of a, of a of an area to get water into. Trying to do this with a regular old tea kettle sounds like a pain in the butt to me and a recipe for a lot of mess. In general, I'm just become a fan of using gooseneck kettles anytime I'm anytime I'm boiling hot water for anything, just because they're so much easier to pour and handle. So in general. Uh, but I do think you want a gooseneck kettle for the Kalita Wave. Uh, and then, of course, you want a scale as well. I use the Akaya scale, uh, another fancy product, but you can get by on just a regular food scale. But we want to be able to make sure that we measure everything that we're doing, that we get the right amount of coffee and water in here. Uh, I'll go over this when we do the brewing, which I'll do shortly. Uh, but for a grind size, I do about just a medium grind size. If you're using a Brazza Encore, I set it to 20. Sometimes I tweak from around there just to play around and, and see what results. Uh, but I like what I get from about a medium grind size. You could go medium coarse, something like that. You don't need to go a more finer to a more drip setting with the Kalita because the way that this dripper kind of works, you'll see uh, three small holes in the bottom. So flow rate out of this dripper is somewhat restricted. So you get, end up with kind of a bit of immersion. You'll see that when we brew, that the we'll pour the water in and it'll sit and then it'll slowly drip down. Not too slowly, but it'll slowly drip down. So I think that kind of longer brew time necessitates a little bit of a coarser grind. It's kind of the same experience with the Chemex. Medium grind size is fine. Uh, as always, you can troubleshoot from there. Uh, for ratios, I like a 15 or 16 to one ratio. So that's uh, 15 grams of water for every gram of coffee. Uh, on this 185, I've brewed with as little as 18 grams of coffee and as much as 36. I think it does better with a little bit more in like the 24 to 32 range, uh, but you can do quite a range of, of brewing with this without really any issues, to be honest. My, my usual brew is about 32 grams of coffee, and I'll brew with 500 grams of water. That's somewhere between 15 and 16 to 1, depending on the coffee. Some coffees I want a little bit more... Uh, 
lower on the ratio, more like 15 to 1. Uh, some coffees I want a little bit higher, uh, but that's just a personal taste. So a good standard to start with if you want to brew a full carafe, five, you know, about 500 milliliters, is to put 32 grams of coffee in there and then brew with 500 grams of water. And that's the water that we pour in and we'll be measuring as we brew. As with any pour over method, any brew method, we're aiming for about the uh, 202 to 205 degree range. If you have a kettle like the Fellow, which has a thermometer on it, you'll be able to tell what the temperature is. If you don't, if you have a less expensive, maybe cheaper gooseneck kettle, you can bring the water to a boil, set it off the heat for a minute or two, and then brew straight away and you'll be just fine. Okay, so those are all the basics. That's what you need, uh, and of course a mug to drink in. I'm gonna go ahead and set up the camera so you can see everything that I'm doing, and then we're gonna brew up a delicious clay to wave. I'm gonna show you some tips as well, uh, some little things that I do that I think help make a better brew. Okay, there's one point I do want to make about the Kalita Wave, and that's that you do not need to rinse the filter. Uh, these paper filters are um, th very thin and do not impart a paper taste in my experience, so it's not necessary to rinse the filter. I also think that rinsing kind of compromises the, let's just say, structural integrity of this shape, uh, and sometimes it can deform. But if you do feel that you want or need to rinse the filter, uh, I do want to make sure that you just pour right in the center, and I'm just going to demonstrate. Do not pour around the edges. Just pour right in the center so as not to disturb the wave. That's it. But again, you do not need to do that. You can just put the filter in and add the coffee, and it works just fine. Uh, but I wanted to show you that to make sure that if you do rinse it, you do it um, as properly as possible. Okay, so like I said, we don't need to rinse the Kalita Wave filter. We can just use it as is. Very straightforward. Add your filter. Stick this on the carafe or your mug. Uh, if you're doing it on a mug, just be sure that um, you're not going to brew too much coffee and overfill. Now add your coffee. I've got, uh, should be about 32, it's about 32 grams. And I'm going to brew with 500 uh, grams of water. Like I said, on temperature, you want to be about 200 degrees. Uh, and then the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to pour a little bit to do a bloom. Now, I usually try to do about one to one. That is, I've got about 32 grams of uh, coffee in here. I'm going to try to pour about 32 grams of water. Uh, and then we're going to let it sit. Uh, and you're going to be able to see what the bloom looks like here. So um, the nice thing about this kettle so I can pour really slowly and just cover the grounds. Keen observers will note I made a rookie mistake and did not tear my scale. So I just gotta add 32 grams onto everything now. Or, or subtract 32 grams rather in my head. Um, okay, so this is the bloom. So you see after adding the water, the coffee is expanding and you got little pockets bubbling to the surface and it's kind of just, it physically looks like it's blooming. And what I wait for is that moment right there. It just kind of let off a bit and then collapsed. Um, so now I could start brewing again. You could also set a timer for 30 seconds. 30 seconds is a good rough time to do this sort of thing. Uh, sometimes I actually do this a lot longer. Uh, I'm gonna talk about this more afterwards but an extended bloom has yielded some interesting results. But since I don't feel like sitting here for five minutes waiting for this, I'm just gonna go ahead and start pouring. Now, here's where the, the intent of pouring, the uh, specificity, the delicateness, basically the smoother and quieter you pour, the better I find for the Kaleida Wave. So by that I mean just being as gentle as possible, adding the water. Um, again, with this fellow kettle, I'm able to go super slow. As far as where I'm pouring, I have this habit of just kind of doing these sort of figure 80 kind of circles just to disperse the water throughout the brewing. But I think uh, for the Kalita Wave, that's somewhat irrelevant. You can actually just kind of do this and you'll be just fine. 
Part of the reason for that is the flat bottom and the three drain holes mean that there's no one specific way the water goes. It all collects, brews, and then drains out um, from different areas. So you don't get channeling. That's one of the uh, stated main benefits, one of the reasons that the Kalita is uh, supposed to provide a more full extraction is that you don't get uh, water going through one particular area in the grounds in the brewing. Now, I've gone about a little over halfway here, 640, whatever. Um, basically, I'm talking, it's a little hard to do. I get the water up to like about this point right here, and then I let it drop a little bit, but you'll notice that there's coffee kind of stuck in the sides. Now what I used to do is I used to pour around the edges. This is what I do now. And that gets all the coffee. I don't have to pour around the edges. Everything settles, and everything I think just extracts more fully. The problem with pouring around the edges is then you end up with water around the outside, and it doesn't do anything. Uh, so Velton actually showed me that, Velton's Coffee, um, showed me that little trick and I've been really pleased with the results since using it. So we're at 500 grams now um, of, of poured, oops, nope, I forgot about the 30, 32, I, I forgot to tear, so I got to go up to 530. Now we're at 500 grams. Uh, but you'll notice, I mean, I kind of did it in two stages there, and that's just because I don't like going all the way to the top. I like to go maybe a, at most a centimeter from the top of the, uh, of the filter. Um, I just kind of like the results. You might be able to see in the video here, the coffee is really settled down, and the water is just going through all of it. Um, I think it really does provide an even extraction. I, like, I mean, you can even do this a couple times more, just get everything settled evenly. Um, and that's a Kalita wave. That's really all there is to it. And once you're done, you take this off, set it aside, and enjoy your coffee. So uh, I'm going to reset the camera and sit back down with some of this and give you some more of my thoughts on the Kalita wave, why I like it, what's so special about it, and that sort of thing. All right, so here we are. We've brewed up on the Kaleido Wave. Um, I thought this would be a quick and easy way uh, as well right here, right now, to show you one of the reasons I really like this. Uh, super easy to clean. Rinse, done. Uh, and then rinse that as well. You'll find uh, that uh, the oils will kind of build up a little bit, but just a little soap and water, uh, easy to clean. Even this carafe is super easy to clean. You'll see in one of my videos with the Chemex that I do this whole thing with ice and salt. That's not necessary with these. They're just easy to clean on their own. So that's the Kalita Wave. Go ahead and pour me some of this. Now, why do I like it so much? I, I have enjoyed the kind of manual brewing methods for some time now. I really, I really like the process of hand making my coffee. And for a long time, I really enjoyed using the Chemex. Um, I also, st I still enjoy using the Chemex. I still enjoy using the AeroPress. Uh, the V60 is fun as well. And uh, I think that I personally like the, the kind of coffee result that I get from a pour over style method where you have grounds in a paper filter and you're pouring water over it. That does produce a particular, um, overall a kind of particular style of coffee. Uh, the paper filter is catching a lot of oils, it's crisper, it's cleaner. I think that you're able to explore more, more tastes in coffee with that kind of brewing. As far as the taste of coffee itself, I think that the Kalita Wave, as I mentioned at the beginning, it's a flat bottom. Uh, so whereas a, a V60 goes to a cone, a Chemex goes to a cone, a Melita uh, or other kinds of kind of brewing methods go to this kind of flat sort of cone shape. Uh, those those like pointed cone shaped uh, drippers all can technically have this problem of channeling that the Kalita wave is supposed to eliminate. Um, and I mentioned the, the sort of channeling aspect while I was brewing, but that's where uh, water will find the path of least resistance through the grounds. And if all the water is going to the same area, 
the water will find areas in the bed of grounds that it's it's easier to for the water to travel through and and that will the water will tend to go through those well the channels basically it's something that i think is difficult to visually demonstrate but the idea is that can happen and that can result in less overall even extraction because some areas of the grounds are being exposed to, exposed to more water, some areas less. The flat bottom of this and the multiple um, dripping holes mean that there isn't one area that the water is going. Uh, the, the small uh, holes as well restrict flow and as you saw in the video, I would pour and then the water would kind of sit and slowly drip down. I think that as well as kind of eliminating this possibility of channeling, making a more overall even extraction, that also adds a little bit of an element of immersion. Uh, the brew time on this is usually about three and a half minutes. I almost never time my brew on this. I just, I just do exactly what I showed you on the video and I get great results. I don't see a need to be more specific about it. Which brings me to another thing that I really like about the Kaleido Wave, and that is that it's so easy. I can make one of these first thing in the morning. I don't need to think about what I'm doing. I just put the filter in, I add the coffee, and then I add the water. And yes, I'm using, I'm using a fancy kettle here. Even a simpler gooseneck kettle will allow you to pour slowly enough to make a really good cup. Uh, this would be more difficult if I only had a standard tea kettle that has a wide spout where you're pouring roughly in there, but the same can be said for every other pour over method, to be honest. Um, so this ends up being a really straightforward brew method. And the result of the cup is a really full tasting coffee. Uh, compared to a Chemex, this has a much rounded flavor. It has more like broad richness to it. It's the best way I can describe that. A Chemex, by comparison, uh, would be kind of brighter and crisper overall. Not that the Kalita is unable to show off the brightness and crispness of a coffee. It just takes, it brings a lot more along with it in terms of a rounded flavor, which I really like. Uh, so the two, the two main tips, which I showed you during the brewing, but I'll go over them again. Uh, one of them is the, the slow pouring. And you saw me kind of pouring in these sort of sort of concentric circles. That's just kind of a habit I've developed of getting the water evenly distributed faster. But uh, I've seen it done, and I've done it myself, where I just pour right in the center, and it brews just fine. Uh, I think that the sort of circle thing might be just my habitual ritual of the brew, where I'm, I'm standing there just kind of getting into all the brewing of the coffee. Uh, and it's an enjoyable practice. So the, the important thing I think is that the water goes in slowly, that you're not providing too much agitation to the grounds. And to me, when I am adding the water more slowly, I get a sweeter cup of coffee. This is a really delicious cup. It's actually, I brewed this this morning and it's actually coming out sweeter now. I think that I was a little more deliberate in my uh, brewing uh, this time around than I was this morning. Uh, and the other, the, other quit, the other tip that I showed you was, um, I'll just do it with nothing in here, uh, but that's about getting the grounds out of the uh, waves on the side. Because as you brew, and you know, when you initially start brewing, grinds are gonna rise with the water and they'll get stuck in the edges. And what I used to do is pour around the edges to pour down the grinds. The problem with that is that you end up pouring water around the edges and it doesn't actually go through the grounds. So you're adding water, which is not extracting coffee. You're not extracting much at all anyways. And that to me is not a great thing. Um, and like I said, I learned the trick from Velton, Velton's Coffee Roasters. You pour to whatever level you're gonna pour to. Like I said, if I'm doing 32 grams, I, I try to go to about there, maybe a centimeter from the top of the filter and then let it drip down a, a bit and then swirl the brew around to catch all those grounds. And, you know, do it gently. Don't swirl your coffee out of the thing, of course, but um, it, uh, to me, it, it creates more flavor. At least, it, it might just be a perception thing, but I have enjoyed my brews more doing that than not doing that. Um, it might be a superstition thing. I'm not exactly sure, but I like it. So um, I'd encourage you to try that as well. That has been 
the Kalita Wave. That's how you brew a really fantastic Kalita Wave. It's a really great piece of equipment. You can dive right in and start brewing amazing coffee with just these tools. I'm going to link below to everything that I recommend and um, also to some coffee that you can get to enjoy with your new Kalita Wave. If you have any questions about brewing on the Kalita, please do leave your comments below. I'll get back to you uh, as soon as I can. Thank you for watching. And after you get your Kalita Wave, go get yourself a coffee lover's box. Get some amazing coffee. It's gonna taste fantastic on this brewer. I guarantee it because it's what I do all the time. Cheers. Bye.